Welcome back to Ask Dan Anything. I'm Dan Munro with Brojo. Today we have a long-term relationship question. I won't go into the details because I don't want to reveal who this is, but basically a couple that's been together for quite some time, deeply in love and connected, are not coming to an agreement on some of the big ticket items in their relationship, namely where in the world they should live and whether or not to have children. Um, and he's asking, you know, at how at what how much do you sacrifice your goals, your dreams, your projects, lifestyle in order to keep the relationship going? So the first point I have to make is that unfortunately it's too late to deal with this at the best time to deal with it, which is before a commitment is established. See, love and attraction is one thing, a relationship is quite something else. You know, a friend of mine who's been married for decades told me that. He's like, sometimes we don't even love each other, but the relationship is this thing that we keep going. Um, and, and that's the way to look at it. It's like a partnership. It's got to survive highs and lows. You have to be going in the same direction. You can't just love each other. That's actually not enough for a great relationship. So these kinds of questions should actually be answered and resolved before a commitment. Uh, in this case, unfortunately, it has not occurred, but I have to make that point. If you're about to get into a relationship with someone, don't avoid these questions because they are disastrous to try and answer later. That being said, I'm going to do my best to help you with this. First and foremost, you need to know the difference between compromising plans and goals versus compromising your values. So, for example, I had a vague goal about living in the United States and I compromised that to live in the Czech Republic. But my value of being honest, I can always be honest, she always supports me with that. The, the mission that I'm on with my work, what I want to do with the world, she's encouraging and supportive of that. Okay, so I don't have to sacrifice who I am to be with her, but I did have to adjust the path that I was taking. I'm fine with that. So you've got to know the difference. Are you sacrificing something that's just a plan for how you could live by your values and you can find another way to do that? Or is this person actually asking you to not be yourself? In which case, I would say that it must never be sacrificed. Integrity must always be prioritized over relationships if you want to have an enjoyable life. There's something we've got to acknowledge here, and it's a thing called friction. It's brought up in uh, Mark Manson's book, Models which is you can be really into each other and be a really good fit, but there's something about the way you live that causes too much friction for you two to be in a relationship together. Disagreeing on whether or not to have children, for example, could be just too much friction. There's a couple I know, kind of friends of mine, uh, who were really a good fit for each other, but they couldn't come to an agreement on that issue, and as time went on, they realized they had to break up. So. We're, we're trying to get into this kind of spectrum here of the deal breaker. The, the points that you're discussing, how important and how high a priority are these points? Are they a deal breaker? Are they too much friction? Because whatever you end up agreeing on it has to come to full agreement without resentment, or it's just going to eat away at the relationship over time. It can't end this discussion with you two staying together, but one person feeling like they lost or compromised more. One person building up bitterness and resentment. Either you come to a full like, yep, let's do it, that's the agreement, both cool, both on board with it, or you break up. Um, you've got to ask yourself, where is the relationship in your priority ranking? Um, it's one of the, the great truths I had to come to terms with when I read uh, The Way of the Superior Man by David Data is that many men, myself included, don't actually put their romantic relationship in the number one spot. It's actually number two. Number one is the mission. And I'm lucky because my relationship supports my mission, so I don't have a conflict there at all. But, and I've been honest with, with my partner around this, my mission is who I am. It's what I'm all about. It's been there since before the relationship. It'll be there during, and if it ends, it'll be there after. It's always been the number one spot. Feminine people, not women necessarily, but feminine people tend to prioritize their romantic relationships. So for them, anything to keep the relationship going is the top spot. You've got to decide which one you are. Where of these things that you're talking about, where do you put the priority? Do you want to be a father and a husband? And is that number one? In which case everything else can be moved to make that happen. Um, 
keep in mind it doesn't have to necessarily happen with this person even though you feel very strongly about it. Um, aim, to, aim for you to both get what you want rather than trying to figure out who's going to win. You know, often you'll be looking at, well, this is what I want, and this is what I want. Those things don't work. But there might be this third option that actually combines it. You know, for example, one of you might want to live in this country, and one of you might want to live in that country. But maybe the two of you could live in this third country that has the benefits of both, for example. Look outside the two dichotomous options that you're fighting over, um, and, and see if there is a win-win a option available, okay? And either way, if anybody's going to compromise, make sure that the person kind of sacrificing wins somehow. You know, or that there's, there's like deal chips, you know, everybody ends up with a fair pile and feels like, yeah, we've both done our part to secure this relationship. You've got to also be prepared to not find an answer. It's going to be really hard for you to negotiate through this if neither of you are willing to face the fact that there might be too much friction. This might not work out. As long as you can be okay with that fact, you'll be open to all the other possibilities before you take that last resort option. In my personal opinion, if you really are right for each other, it isn't going to be that hard to find a way to make this work. It won't feel like a sacrifice. It might be an adjustment, but it won't feel like a loss. If this relationship continues with one or both of you feeling like you had to lose something very vital and valuable and important to you, just to make this relationship work, there's seven billion people on this planet, maybe you two aren't the right ones for each other. Okay, it's you can love each other with that still being the case. Alright. So that's that's my thoughts on that. Like I said, it's kind of trying to shut the door after the horse is bolted kind of thing, but if you guys are really great together and enhances your lives to be together, find a way. Right? Find a way to make it work. Ultimately, you'll never know which decisions were the right ones because you never get to experience the other options. You just have the one that you chose. Living by your values can be done in any situation. So never forget that no matter what decisions you make, you can make it work for yourself. But if you have to compromise who you are to be with someone, then you're not even really connected with them. Hope that helps. Send your questions through to brojo.org slash ask. Subscribe to the channel. And if you really want our good stuff, become one of our Patreon members and supporters below. I'll see you next time.